Yeah, I've got a lot of Soul Eater music stuck in my head. A smidge late, because I uh, randomly had to update this camera program. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not the worst. Yeah, I can't wait till it just immediately starts lagging. So it's... <sighs> Don't put that evil on this chat. Yo, Jamie's here, what up? How's it going, Jamie? Calvin's here. Yep, that's who we're going with. Number one scythe girl. <laughs> Played a couple games of Among Us. Oh snap, did you get to be the traitor again? It's funny though, when you say number one scythe girl, I was like, uh, remembering that Ruby exists. And it's just like, uh, people who would be like, um, you know, they would think Ruby before Maka. And I'm like, man, that's insane. Crazy. It's, madness. It's just utterly madness, yeah. Madness. Utter madness. Like, no offense, but it's just like, this is the Scythe Girl. Scythe Girl. You watch the imposter kill someone right in front of you and then try to blame it on you? Damn. Yeah, obviously it depends on the audience who's the uh, number one Scythe Girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm still going to say Maka. Yeah, right. She's the, the OG. Well, it's probably not actually, but, you know, she's my OG. I can't really think if there's any other older ones. Do you think? I'm not quite sure. Maka has better footwork. That's true. Right. You've not seen most of Soul Eater, so you default to Ruby. Soul Eater is really good. I recommend reading it before watching. It. Yeah, the manga caught up to the uh, to the, the anime, anime caught up, and then uh, it sucks. Yeah, because they they gave it its own ending. Yeah. So, like, the first part of it is really good, and then it just sucks. Yeah. It's one of those animes. That's what happens with monthlies. Yeah, because it was a monthly. It was in the same uh, magazine as uh, Full Metal Alchemist, actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Square Enix thing. Yeah, the Square Enix uh, magazine. You gave the anime a shot and you weren't super impressed? It's probably because it was. Uh, Marcus cute though. Was it? It's a little. It's a little horny on main in the first bit. Yeah, it takes a while to get rolling. Like, uh, it's usually like because the first three, yeah. the first three episodes are the original one shots. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe skip to episode four and then call it a day. I would say it is a good starter anime because yeah. it's not like too anime. I'm gonna try to fix the camera real quick. Sure, sure. Go I see it. it's like kind of laggy. Do you do you, do you boo boo? I had to update the camera program and hopefully it doesn't suck after the update. But yeah, were there any other girls that used a scythe in manga? I don't know off the top of my head. There's probably plenty of randos. I bet you there's like a whole fucking wiki dedicated to people who use scythes. Gotta be. It's like a wiki. It feels like a fighting game thing. Easy. Yeah. Appreciate the camera work and the fight choreography. Mox's design is so non-standard for a shonen anime girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's so much more iconic for it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, 100%, yeah. I 100% agree on all of those statements, yeah. And plus, also, yeah, it's just that the court, yeah, the choreography is really good. The dynamics, in the sense of like, uh, you know, you have a weapon that talks, but also is a human, in the sense of the word, you know, mm -hmm. gives another la layer of like, you know, characters uh, interacting with each other. Uh, plus, also, just uh, the world it involves in itself is really good. Yeah, it's weird because it's kind of like our world, but not. Yeah, but more Halloween-esque, kind of. Yeah. A little bit crazier. Yeah, and then there's like, you know, a wide variety of characters. So, 
has a really large cast and not uh, not really one of them feels wasted they all kind of like serve their purpose yeah it's cool if you're not into it you're not into it yeah it's a product it doesn't you know again yeah it's a consumer product it's okay to be wrong though yeah look not liking good things doesn't make you cool yeah no, just... exactly <laughs> no exactly you heard it here first from Wes. I purposely shun everything everyone loves just so I can feel better about myself. I mean, yeah, obviously. No. <laughs> no. What do you think we've been talking about all this time, Chad? <laughs> Wes is here to let you know he's better than you. Oh, obviously. That's all I do. Yeah. I don't do fun and all I do is judge. It's true. It's true. Yeah, but yeah, she definitely doesn't have the stereotypical, like, shonen girl protagonist or just because most of the, the the girls in this series aren't really what's the word they're not boring yeah they're not boring they're not boring they're not useless yeah they all they do have things. agency yeah yeah that's it they, you know they are they're, they're not, not just a damsel in distress yeah and they don't um they're not a prize for a, for another character yeah and they yeah yeah okay yeah all those all of the above yeah those things yeah yo ash what's up all of the above statements are true and correct. It's October, so we're doing some Soul Eater. Yeah. We gotta keep it Halloween themed. Uh, there was a really good AMV for This is Halloween by Marilyn Manson on this, this show. Mm, I bet. Yeah. I always like when Soul would have like the suit on and play the piano. Oh out. yeah, yeah. That looks really cool. There's a really good um what is it? Uh the track that they actually use in the show is really good mm. for how they do the piano. I think I remember it. I only watched part of the anime. So. Yeah, cuz again, the anime is not very good. Yeah. Got to make sure the shoe is on point. Yeah, cuz I originally I originally read the like first or first few chapters i think when it first came out or something like that yeah and there wasn't a lot of it so then i came back to it later when there was an anime and then uh i don't remember if like i had caught up or if something happened i think i just for some reason i stopped watching the anime and then i read the manga from where i stopped on the anime yeah and then i caught up to when it was still coming out yeah and then eventually read it to the end because I caught up on it when I, I first started reading it, um, and I wasn't into it at first because mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, this is kind of like just too etchy and dumb. But then I kept seeing it was being updated, and then I was like, look, I was like well, where are they at now? What am I doing? And it was, um, mm -hmm. the they were at the, they were fighting in the snow versus the arachnophobia people oh, for that yeah. first time, and it was that fight between Sid and Mifune. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> like, yeah, with arachnophobia, or the, her arachnia, yeah. The yeah. arachnia, like, arc was when it was really good. Yeah. Like, could, that's when it really picks up. Definitely. But yeah, because, like, that, that whole shit with uh, Mifune fighting, I was like, wait, he's just got a million fucking swords? Yeah, throws them all everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking crazy, yeah. I fucking loved that. It was awesome. Jamie says it's a nice shoe. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like Arachnia is when this series got like really good. Yeah. Which it's, is because like that's where the anime ends, yeah. right? If I remember yeah, right. Yeah, the anime. Doesn't she just like falcon punch the Kishin? That's what yeah. someone told me. That she just falcon punches the Kishin and that's the end of the anime. Well, because they beat Arachna. They beat Ara uh, Arachna or whatever her name is. Yeah, I thought uh, it was like Arachnia. Or Arachnia, that's it. Yeah. yeah. They beat Arachnia, but they don't beat her in the same way they do in the manga. Because they, they, what they do is they the anime caught up uh, right when they were in the middle of the Arachnophobia arc. Okay. So, like, the fight between Mifune and Blackstar is completely different yeah, in the anime. because Because Mifune doesn't, like, die yeah, in the anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, yeah, he just gets to get beat up. That's about it. Yeah, Arachne. Yeah, it's spelled like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's been a while, so yeah, I... shows it in the chat, yeah. Yeah. I just remember she was spider-themed. Yeah. I just know that the, the her, 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 like, madness was called arachnophobia. Because she had, like, the weird, like, magic that she did that, like, like, made everyone go insane. 
uh, like I remember the specifically where uh, like Sol and Maka get in there and she's like dead, but not really. Mm-hmm. And uh, they like turn all into puppets and shit. Yes. Yeah, and I was like, man, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. anytime he did shit with the madness. Yeah. It was so sick. Yeah, because he'd always he was one of those mangaka that like had a really cool style. Um, it was very graffiti. Plus, also like. Um, it didn't look like other manga or anime it, like yeah. at the time like a lot of the time during that period i was like man a lot of manga and anime is kind of like really the same mm-hmm. and it was like really during that t- like it's really funny when i was looking up reference for um of this of these characters and you're like oh it was definitely during this time period because all of them were drawn in that really dumb kind of like there's a lot of fan art drawn in that really old like deviant art moe anime yeah. style and you're like oh man i feel like i feel feel this <laughs> mm-hmm. i feel what era this is from i'm transported right but yeah uh but yeah no, this this series is like got a lot of style to it a lot of sensibility really good action really good movement for the characters things like that i i can't sing the praises of the series enough uh i thought some of the weapons they turned into were really cool that too yeah like the girl who turned to a lantern. Yeah, because like, that's really cool to get a lantern. That's yeah, like your weapon. And then they had um, they had uh the the fists. Yeah, the two that turn into like the gloves. Yeah, the gauntlets. Yeah, they just beat ass. Yeah. Yeah, that and it has like a really wide uh, representation. Like, yeah, there are characters from all over the world. That's true, and then Krona is like in the actual Japanese. They always refer to them like they use yeah, they them because America everyone's like what gender is Krona and then in Japan it's like none <laughs> like they don't yeah, care. I can't remember what the like official stance on this thing is. It's been so long now. It's uh it's so weird. Okay, so it's actually really weird because like, doesn't Medusa technically refer to Krona as her daughter? I think so. Is what Medusa says. Medu- so it actually depends but, on the translation. translation also, yeah. which is really annoying. It really, it actually depends on the translation. So, so yeah. um, the, uh, so the anime decided to go with boy. It, the manga in America decided to go with girl. Mm, okay. And in the actual original Japanese, there is no actual gender. Given. Yeah, I know the character is not like listed with a gender. Program. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what certain people said. Is they just, what I was trying to remember. yeah, yeah. They they said, but also it was a fan translation. Yeah. So. so the fan translations all set would change yeah. depending on who it was. But in the actual translation, it was child. It was just child. That's right. They just say my child. See what the wiki says. That everyone can fight over. I bet you that wiki is constantly like updated. I would not. It's probably locked. Yeah. Right. That would be. That also would be shocking either. Yeah, I just remember that whole thing being like a huge debate over. Uh... Yeah, it's listed as unknown on this. Yeah. Yeah, and Krona's also great too. I actually really yeah, like Krona. Yeah, a cool, cool character anyway. So. Yeah, because like Krona had a lot of cool trauma and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. like was really well written. Like I would. Your weapon was funny. Yeah, Ragnarok. I will it was still basically like Deadpool kind yeah. of. Yeah, I'll actually never forget that chapter. The, the chapter where Krona kills her, kill, kills Medusa. Yes, oh my god. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't know, we're going to talk about all spoilers, because this is like a 10-year-old plus series. Yeah. So. Yeah, when Krona killed Medusa, man, like, that whole chapter was wild, because it was just like uh, this little children's book that, yes. she, that Krona had, and it was called A Simple Story About Killing People, and it just yeah. had a list of every way you can kill a person. Yeah. And, like, um, Medusa would, like, lock uh crona up in a dungeon and uh, starve him, uh starve him until uh crona was like ready to kill a rabbit yeah yeah it's... yeah that was one of those really trippy chapters yeah this was anime it was drawn so crazy yeah because it was just drawn like very stick figurey yeah i really liked it i was like man mm-hmm. this is great i am terrified <laughs> yeah But yeah, there's like that. I also really liked Kim because Kim was in it for the money. Yes. Yeah, Kim was cool. Yeah. Ox. 
Dogs. The fucking <laughs> yeah, stupid little hair. The stupid fucking hair and fucking towers. And he's like, anyone can change, and he just he like snaps them off. Yeah, yeah, he snapped his hair off. Yeah, this like, is so funny because it's done in such an intense way. Oh yeah, it's like over the top shonen moment. Yeah, he snaps his hair off. He's just like anyone can change. Ugh. Yeah, and then he grows his hair out because they start dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, <laughs> she's like, yeah, your hair is dumb. You gotta, you gotta let that grow out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's just, uh, this series is great. Yeah, and fucking Keelik, yeah, fucking sniping people from the earth on the moon. Yeah. Yeah, the final battle on the moon, man. The, the last battle on the moon, oh, so sick. Yeah. When they it, just fly to the moon on, yeah, like, blimps. blimps. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That, yeah. that whole time, they're just like, all right, now we can go to the moon. I'm like, what? They can just go to the moon the whole time? Yeah. This is nutty. Yeah, with the fucking shit, too, where that, uh... Where uh, the mirror dude was just wearing the, the yeah. bear head, Tesla Tacoka or whatever right. his name was. Wow, spoilers! Yeah, exactly. Like I said, yeah, we don't care. Yeah, we <laughs> legit. We do not care. This series has been out for ten plus years. This is ten plus years. Yeah, like dude, they keep re- they've re released the manga like multiple times, and they're now re releasing it again. Yeah, there's a special edition version now that's like hardcover. Yeah, I don't really like it as much. I don't like the covers. Um, I think you said you didn't like the paper, right? I also don't like the paper, yeah. Yeah. It has that more plasticky feel. Yeah. That's because a lot of hardcovers are like that. No, I know. It's That's just a personal take. It's it's because of the color pages. Yeah. If they print the color pages, they usually don't switch back to normal paper. Yeah, I, I get that. It's just that, like, you could have done it the way they do for the Wotokoi ones. Yeah, they do actually switch back, which is really nice. Yeah. That's, uh, who, who prints that? Is that Kodansha or something? Oh, uh, I think so? Yeah, they have nice books. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, though. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, uh... Yeah, they had fucking Justin. Oh, dude, Justin Law, hell yeah. Yeah. I still want those headphones, dude. Those are, like, the only earbuds I would rock. So I don't have earbuds. Gotta get the official Justin Law earbuds. Got him. That's it, man. But yeah, no, this character's great, too. Maka is actually a really cool character in the sense of, like, there's a whole arc about um, her, because they, after they beat Arachna, uh, there's a whole arc with a whole bunch of other stuff, and they go inside this, uh, the book of, like, that has yeah. the seven deadly sins, and um, there's a lot of uh, parts where Maka's been starting to doubt whether or not it's her power that's gotten in this far, or mm-hmm. if it's just because Soul is there, uh, doing pretty much everything for her. Yeah. And I thought that was a really good character arc where she, like, um, you know, tries to remove all doubt that she's not, that she's worthy of being a Meister of a Death Scythe. Yeah. Yeah, no, the characters are really good. Yeah. That's what makes this series good. Yeah. It's a very good sense of character, yeah. Like, the the plot can be, like, whatever the fuck. Yeah. And, like, whatever powers are coming up is, like, yeah. fights. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shonen series with a lot of fighting. Yeah. So. But it's, like... It still manages to keep all of the characters really nice and, like, tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all have really good, like, faults and stuff, too. Yeah. Like, uh, Tsubaki being extremely horny. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Man, we can't sleep in the same bed anymore. Wait, you guys were sleeping in the same bed? Well, yeah, it's only a one room. <laughs> it's a one room apartment. Of course, of course we're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. That fucking shit was hilarious. Yeah, there's so you know like how most like manga and stuff like will uh, people will do like oh what if they were this other gender? Soul Eater actually just had a whole arc where they swapped genders. Yeah, that was really fun. And the the gag was is that like you'll you'll eventually turn back to your original gender, but it's based upon how horny you were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like, so they were all like, oh shit, who's gonna turn last? Yeah, so they're all like taking bets and shit. And they're yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh my god, guys, you're trying to save your friend. Stop this. trying to figure out who's horny on me yeah they're all just like come on who is yeah, it <laughs> yeah they'll be all troll about it yeah oh and then obviously how could i forget the best character which would be excalibur excalibur, excalibur. i fucking love that dude oh shit i didn't even realize we didn't change it well they're all going to one because we're just saying excalibur song going to california uh, I'm looking for her. Bro, I love that um that album that guy did. 
for Soul Eater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sinatus Tempo. He does, like, all the cool anime-themed, like, albums. Because there's one for Excalibur that sounds fucking sweet. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Excalibur! Excalibur! <laughs> That's also like one of the best moments is when it's like in the final fight and yeah. Shigami is just like it would be great if we had the legendary weapon Excalibur on our side and then Excalibur is just looking at me he's like yeah it sure would be this is just sips his dumb. tea yeah just fucking sips tea the <laughs> ultimate that guy's god tier anime troll oh yeah like wow fucking god tier <laughs> man good times right Good times. Yes. Nice. Calvin's in on it. Excalibur. Excalibur. He's both the most broken and annoying weapon. Oh, yeah. I love the faces that everyone makes whenever oh, they're yeah. pissed off. Because he's such a fucking troll. Dude, but he's fresh, though. Oh, yeah. He's got that pimp cane in the hat. Yeah. Like, dude, that guy's fresh as fuck. He's definitely, like, he's up in the best dressed. Anime best dressed. Anime best dressed, man. Top ten freshest anime characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cringe. Yeah, yeah, that face. Yeah. freshest anime characters easily he's easily. easily in the top 10 oh yeah easily in the top 10 i also like how shinigami changed his mask because it would because he didn't want to scare the children yeah 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 whenever they show him in the past he has the mean face yeah Grr. oh yeah that's right and mosquito yeah they never showed mosquito's true form in the manga i mean right, in the anime yeah, right. Oh, yeah. they didn't do that? Yeah, I, didn't, like I said, I didn't finish the anime. Yeah, they didn't, it they didn't show off when he turns into the fucking full-on vampire. Oh, damn, that sucks, because that was cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah, they never showed that. He just kind of got wrecked, like... Ouch. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, I forgot about that. Yeah, they didn't... They, they did him super dirty. Yeah, Noah's not in there. That makes sense, yeah, because, like I said, it ends at... And the then, writing. like, uh, what is it, that chainsaw dude... Yeah, he like doesn't. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he just gets killed in the anime, but in the manga he gets like, he he swaps bodies with a another golem of himself. Mm -hmm. That's a chick. I do remember that. Yeah, and then like ends up freezing in the sloth world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in the manga. So go read the manga chat. It's good. It's good. It's tear. It's tear fun. I get the shoe just perfect. Yeah, I don't get the shoe just right. I don't get the shoe just right. Is it really a Micah art if the shoes aren't on point? It's true. Atsushi Okuba will fly out here to personally kick me in the dick for not getting the shoes just right. Oh shit, maybe you need to get those shoes wrong. Matt. I know, right? I'm <laughs> just <laughs> get those shoes wrong, Matt. <laughs> just gotta just I gotta get them just slightly right. wrong. Just so he only kicks me in the dick a little. I don't want him to kick me in the dick a lot, but God, to have Atsushi Okubo. To say that, if, that he kicked you in the dick. Yeah. Just Legendary to... moment. Legendary moment. Legendary moment. Legendary moment where I got kicked in the dick. Yeah. By Atsushi Okubo. Famous mangaka kicked me in the dick. What have you done with your lives? Right. What have you all done? Definitely not been kicked in the dick by a fucking god tier mangaka. Didn't even have to pay. Didn't even. Didn't even have to pay. He paid for his own flight and everything. All right. I was like, I saw the brush go like walking. I was like, that's on the ruler, right? It's yeah, that's on the ruler, right? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, just don't worry, don't worry. Don't right. worry. Don't you worry your pretty oh, little worried. head. I'm worried. Don't you worry your pretty little head. I'm worried. I'm looking for him. <laughs> I like that post where like someone had the uh, plush. And they were in California. They're like, you finally made it. You finally made it. Yeah, I remember that. This shit is hilarious. It. 
So what's everybody up to right now? Yeah, how's everyone hanging out? You guys doing all right? I thought about eating dinner, but then I didn't. But I'm going to need to at some point. Yes, especially if we're going to be able to watch Sentai. Yeah. With the new uh, the new villain. Oh, man. That new the villain. secretary. The secretary. The crazy tongue thing she does. Oh, man. <laughs> I really love humans. I love watching them grovel at my feet. I'm like, oh, shit. Devin, calm down. Hide yeah. your boner. Hide your boner. Yeah. And again, it's another like actual human enemy. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, not someone with a suit, like a full suit on or anything. Yeah, so it's... I like that they have that again. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I like whenever it's just like a person with a costume. I think it always looks a little better. Yeah. I can agree that. Yeah, because then they can display like real emotion. Yeah, they've been doing that a lot too with that. Even the the general dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been pretty good about that. I've been so busy like, trying to get the scythe just right. Yeah, also I like this, one of the things I like about this too, series too, is everyone has a really unique sense of fashion. Definitely. Like, throughout the series. Like, yeah, the characters don't... There's no, like, um, sameness. You yeah. Know, you can be like, which character is that? Is that this person with the same fucking look as every other character? That and also, like, even if the character changes outfits, you know who it is. Like, Soul yes. has changed his hairstyle so many damn times, and you're like, oh, it's Soul. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, I do like whenever... Uh, the characters change outfits in a series because that, that's also a lot more realistic yeah that can be really annoying so like i don't know it's something that like it doesn't bother me if they don't because it's just something you're kind of used to that's like the default yeah because like, when they do change you really and, notice and it and the more often they do it you notice it even more like i said when i was watching gravity falls and like every episode mabel had a different sweater yeah i was like oh shit okay like it makes it stand out even more yeah I appreciate that. Like in uh, One Piece, whenever the characters like change their outfits yeah, yeah. for each arc. <laughs> or whenever they have ridiculous outfits in the movie. Uh, yeah, those outfits in the movie they are just, wild. They just design something goofy for the movie every yeah, time. Every time. Yeah, every time. Right, we're gonna... Since there's a lot of uh, black on this one, I'm gonna need to uh, bring out the big guns. Mm-hmm. Are you done with the light table? Yeah, for for this piece, yes. Okay, I'm gonna line. I'm, I'm, like, I'm gonna try and line this up over here. There, there we go. Gotta watch them sweaters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was always like wondering what she was gonna have on. I like the one that has a floppy disk on it. Just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, Yeah, the soundtrack for this show is also really good, too. Yeah, I mean, they got Lotus Juice. They got Lotus Juice, man. Dude, Lotus Juice. Every time. Everything he's in, it's usually fire. I did finish Gravity Falls. I finished it a couple weeks ago, I think, now. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I really liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not used to, like... I don't know. I don't see too many American cartoons I enjoy that are intended for kids. Yeah, for sure. This did a very good job of appealing to all age groups. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, when I 
stopped kind of like caring about American cartoons. It was mostly, like I said, the era of the just really weird, mindlessy kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, like I said, Flapjack or like Clarence, yeah. you know, and just stuff like that. And no one was recommending anything that wasn't uh, like on Adult Swim or that. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that was just like, well, if you're not high enough, <laughs> you're not going to like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really, like I said, yeah, it was really good. I like that it has an ending also. Yeah. That's another thing I don't usually like about American just shows in general, even live action shows. Yeah, they don't really ever end. They don't have, and if they have an end, it feels rushed because they didn't know that they were getting canceled until like halfway through the last season. Yeah. Something like that. So yes. they're like, oh shit, now I have to wrap this whole thing up in yeah, five yeah. episodes or whatever. And that's always frustrating. Or they've just gone on so long they had they weren't doing anything anyway. Yeah. That definitely is always a point of frustration for me, at least. Mm-hmm. That was one thing I had always liked about anime. Yeah. Was that most anime, like, kind of at least felt like it had a more conclusive end. Well, also, like, uh, um, in the ma- anime, manga, and all that stuff, I've talked about this multiple times, but there's a, when you ask somebody, where do I start with Naruto? You say volume one. Yeah. If you ask me, where do I start with Batman? They're like, well, which one? Yeah, or if it was something like the Looney Tunes or something. You know, yeah. there are some of those ones that just, they just have a million cartoons. You know, they're yeah. designed just to be like that. Yeah, they're just designed to exist. And yeah, those are, are fine. I don't mind those. I kind of like those if they're good. Yeah. Like, I love the old Looney Tunes. Again, yeah, it's just a so, different thing. But, but like, yeah, like, if they seem like they have a story and then they just kind of peter out like that. Yeah. Then it's frustrating, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, definitely with a lot of that stuff that's like rebooted over and over. Yeah. For, like you said, with Batman or especially, yeah, with comics, superhero comics and stuff. Yeah. What about Batman Beyond? I mean, fuck it. If you want to start on Batman Beyond, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I like Cyberpunk. Yeah, I didn't actually like it that much when it was on, but uh, thinking back on it, I like it now. I've seen uh, parts of it since then, and I'm like, oh, this is better than I remember it. Yeah, it's weird. Um, Probably just was ahead of its time sort of thing, you know what I mean? I think it was also just that, like, I had really liked the animated series, and then I was like, this isn't Batman the animated series. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I am young, you know? (laughs) It was like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this isn't what I... This isn't what I signed this for. Isn't, this isn't what I used to run home for. Yeah. I'm not running home for this show. Also, it came on on Saturday morning, so I didn't have to. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, this is but, a you know, show. It was a Saturday morning show. But still, that's not the point, Matthew. I have principles. It's probably better than I remember it. Because, like I said, I remember that I just was like, ah, oh, this, isn't, this isn't the Batman I'm used to watching. Yeah. Terry's a good character. That one, sh- that show actually didn't get a conclusive ending until like Justice League came out when gave them the conclusive episode. That's so weird. Yeah, because it was like one of those shows that got canceled. Just got canceled. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Saturday morning cartoon. Same with like Teen Titans. That show just got canceled and then not a real conclusive ending. Yeah, I've heard that. You gonna go eat dinner, Ash? All right. Enjoy. We're going to be watching Kira Major later. Yeah. I'm so hyped. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. You come back on if we're still here? Yeah, we'll be here till probably around 10. Yeah, that's our usual go-to. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's, like, some heavy stuff like this. Like, there's a lot of color and a lot of black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because what part are you going to color on this? Besides uh, the eyes. Uh, the background. And the scythe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the scythe. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know you're coloring the background. No, it's... Background and eyes are what you always do, and then you pick something else. It's a tiny monkey status, yes. Yeah, yeah. I did like Batman Brave and the Bold. Yeah. The, the like, three episodes I saw of that, it's I was it's... like, okay, this is not bad. Yeah, because it's a, a, a more comedic take. Yeah. 
it clearly like knew what it was doing and was not trying to be serious, but was doing a really good job about it. Yeah. I do love that uh, musical episode with uh, Neil Patrick Harris as the villain. Oh, yes. I did see that one. That was yeah. one of the few ones I've seen. Because he's the music meister. Yeah. Because, um... Yeah, because I like that they used a bunch of those weirder old villains. Yeah, like Calendar Man. That had sometimes shown up in the uh, live-action one, or they were definitely like the old... Um, uh, what age? It's I don't Golden remember age. Golden Age, right? Comics. Yeah. yeah. It was old Gold Age, maybe silver type villains. Yeah, the, the really dumb ones. Yeah. Yeah, just increasingly dumb. Was that the blue Batman? Yes, I believe he was blue. Yeah. Because they're referencing the fact that he was originally blue in the comics because yeah they couldn't really print black very well. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was working on other things earlier today, Chad. Yeah, because Batman used to be what well, blue and gray, right? Is yeah. his original colors, I it believe. Blue, gray, and yellow. Blue, gray, and yellow. Oh yeah, I guess the yellow. Yeah, I forgot about to mention that part, but yeah. And then he became like black and gray mostly. Yeah, because of and, the uh, animated series, and also you could print black and gray a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, and then later they just turned him like all black in the movies. Yeah. I'm pretty sure all the live action movies are the when he first comes all black, right? Yeah, that are like navy blue. Mr. Freeze is also one of the, was one of my faves actually, and I really hated how they did him dirty in parts of the cartoon. Oh, in the original one? Uh, yeah, season four. Because mm. so he was meant to just be like a one-off kind of villain because he dies or kind no he doesn't die um you know the movie I always like most of them with Mr. Freeze I'm pretty sure I always liked Mr. Freeze yeah was a so I love that movie yeah the movie's really good so what happened was in like season four they like they you know like when it, they started like kind of changing up the formula and like Nightwing was there and they also changed up the design for the Joker and things like that oh yeah that, I think that was when I stopped watching. Yeah. Or that was when I just don't remember it anymore. So that's when uh, Mr. Freeze came back, and he was mm -hmm. just a head on a robot body. Mm, I think I vaguely remember yeah. that. Yeah, he was like a head on a robot body, and then like he had this weird like um, spider outfit like looking thing that he was when he was off his body. And I was like, this is really fucking stupid. Yeah, damn, I must have completely blocked that from my mind, because yeah. I had not thought of that. I, I think I vaguely remember that. Would you like to see it? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> but I believe you. I think I kind of remember it. I think it's coming back. That's bullshit. So, I believe I believe that that would happen. Yeah. So, and then like, uh, but they did make um, the Scarecrow a lot better in that season. The Scarecrow was always cool. I like him. Yeah, they actually made him a lot better. Uh, he's voiced by Herbert West from Reanimator. Oh, nice. The same dude? Yeah, same Sick. dude. So he's, uh, he's that That's dude. cool. Yeah. That's like perfect. Yeah. That's a perfect choice. I know. I thought so too. I was like, holy shit. Because it's like, he would just be subtly whispering and you're like, well, that's fucking terrifying. Because <laughs> like, the first iteration of Scarecrow in the Batman animated series was pretty lame. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of like he wasn't nearly as like scary yeah 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 in this one it was like oh that's fucking nightmare fuel kids <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually a uh, random villain that I always liked was that gangster puppet yeah I actually really liked that I thought those were just is a cool idea yeah yeah you know I'm just like I don't know what I loved about it it was just so funny to see like a gangster with a machine like a gangster puppet with a machine gun yeah it's yeah. like hilarious to me yeah it is pretty silly yeah I just always liked that also, uh, I feel like episodes with Clayface were pretty good. A lot yeah, of the, the Clayface was ones were really good. I feel actually, like Clayface had a lot of cool episodes. Clayface was one of my favorite villains back in the day too. Mm -hmm. uh, Clayface, actually, I like Clayface more than I liked. Um, uh, I, my top was uh, my first favorite was uh, Mister Freeze, mm -hmm. and then my second favorite was Clayface, and then like uh, the rest of them were kind of just okay to me. Okay, I got you. I like, I guess I like Black Mask a bit. Mm, yeah. I remember some weird random episodes. There's an episode for some reason I just remember where Batman has to fight like a guy who has like invisible stuff and he has an invisible car. It's the one episode. That's yeah. And I'm like, man, that is so dangerous to have an invisible car. 
<laughs> like, because they're even sh like they're even almost getting in car accidents and stuff. This is funny that text. Like, man, it's so dangerous. Yeah, right. And Calvin says that Clayface episode fucked him as a kid. Yeah, it was pretty creepy. Like, yeah. it was good. I remember liking it a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of crazy stuff they did in that. Yeah, it was really cool. That like neo noir like. Uh, yeah, because that was just, to it. Yeah, that's why it was. That's why it was so good. Is it had like the noir feel. It had a bit mixture of like you know the um, the you know the futuristic stylings, and then it's like still yeah, it's neo noir. Yeah, like. uh, yeah, so. it's just really well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Anna has a gangster puppet with a machine gun. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We're aware. That's just cool, man. I just remember there's this girl Batman is trying to save, and she turns back into Clay at the end. Oh, yeah, shit, yeah. I remember that episode. Yeah, that was the mm -hmm. one. It was uh, Robin was like fell in love with her, and it was just a piece of Clayface. Yeah. Because it forgot, and it, that forgot that it was a part of Clayface because it lost its memory. Mm -hmm. and I was like, man, that, that I remember that episode being really fucking sad. Because also it was funny too. Now that I think about it, it reminds me of uh, with uh, Forze. Yes. What do you do when you find out the girl you like? Is goo. She's the space goo. What do you do when you find out the girl you like is a part of Clayface? Yeah. But yeah, he had some cool ones. Uh, any of them with um, that doctor. I forgot his name, but the doctor. Oh, Dr. Hugo Strange? Yes. Those were some good fucking episodes. Whenever yeah. he's like fucking with Batman's mind, I yeah. remember really liking those as a kid. Yeah, my I, my least favorite ones were the ones that usually involved Ra's al Ghul, just because I really didn't like the Lazarus Pit. Yeah, you know that's funny is like you mentioned that, and I was like, I don't remember almost anything of him in that series, so I must not have been too into them either. Yeah, he's not very interesting. And I don't remember, it's not like that I remember specific episodes or events as much as I remember like, the feeling that the episodes of these villains give me. Yeah, and like Mr. Freeze gives you a, vil a very it's just a, like, a, feel, a good feeling. Yeah, I'm just like, I remember if it was a Mr. Freeze episode, it was fucking good. Yeah. That's what I remember. That's how I remember this show, is like, I remember, it's like, Mr. Freeze, good. Gangster Puppet, awesome. Good. Shit like that. Two-Face had some pretty good episodes, too. Two-Face was really good, too. Yeah, I think I really like how they did Two-Face in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, animated series. Yeah. As opposed to most other media. Like, again, there's a lot of really interesting ways they, any they of the tackle. Villains, any of the villains who had, like, a better psychological thing. Yeah, because that was one of those things, too. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Is because, like, um, the reason why I don't like the Joker as much is because, like, everyone's like, oh, he's crazy and all that stuff. I'm like, that's, yeah, but why? Like, he's just supposed to be chaos. You're yeah. know, like, but, like, why? <laughs> well, if I remember right, most of the villains are supposed to be kind of like a facet of Batman's psyche or something. Yeah. Kind of, right? Is something like that? Something like loosely or something? They're, they're supposed to represent things like that. Like, something like that. They're all supposed to have like a psychological kind of thing to them. Yeah, it's just like and frustrating like whenever that. it's like not interesting. Yeah, now once you go away from that and just be like, hey, these are just a bunch of villains and like the Riddler just puts bombs in a thing because he felt like it you know mm -hmm. and you don't like explore the character of the the villain you yeah. know then it's boring yeah it's like oh the joker just decided to be you know the joker and you know do something yeah you know? i was like well, you know i know that he's like uh a, like a, a, like supposed to be like a compulsive liar this that and the other and it was like really good to see the harley quinn the harley quinn stuff is really good yes because i really hate harley quinn like now because she's really yeah. boring Jamie says Joker's so fucking annoying. Yeah, he just gradually got worse and worse. Like, he was really good. Because I do really like the Joker in the old one. Like, yeah. From watching it back then. Yeah, because also back then it was like, the people were like, well, you're not allowed to kill with the Joker. And then they're like, okay, well, how do we get around that and make it somehow worse? Yeah. Because I remember as a kid seeing, like, the the smile things that he would make people like. Oh, yeah, the faces that people would have. Yeah, yeah. from him, like, putting, like, the Joker gas on them, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Plus, I also liked I liked the Joker because I watched I the first Batman movie with Michael Keaton is the one I've seen the most. Mm, that makes because sense. Because when I was a real young kid, when I was a young boy, obviously, <laughs> you know, your father uh, burned me with a cigarette at Disney World. Oh yes, yes. Um, you know, I believe that was after the parade. 
Uh, did, he, did he tell you that you would defeat your demons? Uh, no, no, he didn't say that. Oh, damn. But, um, you know, what were we talking about before <laughs> I decided to make a My Chemical Romance joke? Uh, Joker? Yes, jo- yes, the Joker. Uh, I don't remember what it was about. It was something involving the Michael Keaton film? Oh, yeah, I just watched that movie a lot because that was pretty much the only one, and the second one had, like, just come out. Yeah. So it was something like that. Like, the second one was much newer. The one with Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, that white gold, yeah. Yeah, so for the most part, it was, I had those two to watch, and, like, I just liked the one with Joker better. Yeah. I thought it was a better movie, I think. That movie is better, because it also has the guy, his number one guy. Yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like that's just, like, a better one, maybe? I'm not sure. It's a better movie. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen either of them. I just like Jack Nicholson, I think, also. I just think the Jack Nicholson Joker was kind of cool. I mean, some stuff I like in that movie. Also, like, the Joker in that film is not nearly as grating as he had been at that point. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He was just, like... Because like, everyone's, like, trying to make... The problem I thought had with, like, that kind of character was that everyone tried to go really too hard... Yo, Spirit, what's up? Go real too hard on making him edgy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You never liked the Joker ever? That's fine. Again, consumer product. I don't like the Joker much now. I like some stuff about the Joker, yeah. you know? I mean, he was a good foil. Uh, yeah. For Batman. Yeah, I think he's a good foil for Batman. I like that kind of original premise, you know, of the, like, you know, uh, just anyone with a bad day, you know, anyone pushed enough. Yeah. You know, it's like that. Because that's a classic thing in, mm-hmm. you know, stories. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like going back to the, uh, you know, it's kind of like with, like, Michael Douglas and, like, falling down or whatever, yeah. stuff like that. But now, everyone's just like, this is me normally all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh God. God, get it. You're, you're Yeah. It, there's there's the I'm always the Joker dudes and the like I'm always Harley Quinn chicks. You know? Yeah. My ideal romance is Harley Quinn and Joker. Yeah. You're just like, ho ho ho, buddy. Yeah. Yikes. So just let me uh make sure to stand all the way over on the other side of the room so I never have to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Because villains, villains are cool. Villains have a lot of appeal because they usually are... Some part of them speaks to kind of like the absurdity of societal norms, you yeah. know? Like that. They, they generally stand against some sort of a societal norm that, you know... So if what they're against makes sense to a person then yeah it's like well i like this character because of that but then once you're like i just am this character (laughs) you know it's like kind of getting away from you you know they weren't showing you like a role model to act like you know they were not um (laughs) you were just supposed to be like you're supposed to be like oh okay this i kind of get this you know like that kind of like you understand it You, you see that it's like maybe you're not alone in it but then that would be the wrong way to go about it that yeah. kind of thing that's I guess, something like that I, I, that's, think. I agree but, with that it's like most of that stuff is kind of like really frustrating because you're like this sounds like some Final Fantasy house shit what do you mean like I'm a little confused here like do you mean like house Final Fantasy house like how I'm, I'm a little confused on that House like the music, house like the doctor. Yeah, it's actually. House like the 1977 Japanese classic film. <laughs> sure, buddy. <laughs> keep on, keep on dreaming. Bro, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time. I know. <laughs> my girl, Kung Fu. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. She's just the original, uh, you know, Sailor Jupiter. Sailor Jupiter. Yeah. She's the original Sailor Jupiter. All right. Well. Okay. It's some music you're listening to. Okay, that's what I figured. Final Fantasy House down the rabbit hole. Okay. Oh, Final Fantasy House is a like thing. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna click on this video. See what we're talking about here. Okay, I've seen like some of these videos pop up where it says down the rabbit hole. Okay, there we go. 
It's like how the untamed handled it. Protag was vilified by society because he didn't follow the norms, but the norms themselves were oppressive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how you write a good villain. Make them seem understandable. And not just because they're evil, but because yeah. there's something that's wrong, and they think that they, they need to be the one to fix it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for a, for a villain, motive is key. Yeah, definitely. That's what makes a villain, is their motive. Alright, okay, well, yeah. we're done with this one? Yeah, this looks really good. Alright, now we're on to Death Kid. So, chat, you're gonna watch me cheat. Because... This, I guess that's right. The society was the villain. I mean, you know, but from the point of society, though, they were the good guys. Dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Society! Okay. Well, then that would make him kind of an anti-hero, right? Yeah. He was a villain to society, but not the audience. Yeah, then he's an anti-hero, right? Technically? Yeah. Or that's, no? That's, that... that's technically correct, but technically, like... But that's not correct, right? Yeah. Uh, anti-hero is... Yeah, like, anti-hero is not exactly that. I mean, you're supposed to be rooting for the anti-hero, in a way. So... It's hard to... Uh, it's kind it's of... about how crazy people who thought they were Final Fantasy characters... Oh, shit. Okay. In the show, he's a legit good person. Okay. The book has more gray area. Okay. Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay. I wanna make sure I have it up here. Thirteen two villain? I never played that game. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a thirteen part two. There is a thirteen part two? I didn't know that. Well now you know. Either that or I forgot it. Just like how I forgot Mr. Freeze turned into a robot. Probably for the Yes, we, Jamie, we know your, your unbridled love of the untamed. Well, you know, she's pretty subtle about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, if you like a show, you like a show. Yeah. Again, products are made to be liked. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I like. Yeah. Actually, hold on before I... This one. Grab. This. And what do you got? I'm just going to make the circles. There's a 13 part 3? What? Yeah, there's uh, three games in total. There's. Uh, huh. there's That's the one with Lightning, right? Yeah, it's called Lightning Returns, is the third okay, one. Okay, okay. In the second one, uh, I think Lightning's the main character still, or is, maybe not. It'd be weird if she wasn't, I guess. I, I, I actually can't sure. remember. Um, I just know that there, I was not a fan of 13 at I all. I came for Pretty Boys, but stayed for the commentary on society and. And how we let it define our place in the world and our self worth. That's funny. It's deep. I'm just gonna leave that alone because. Yeah, it's probably. And the pretty boys. And the pretty boys, yeah. Thirteen is the linear as fuck game. Thirteen two is Pokemon, and thirteen three is fashion fantasy. Yeah, because okay. I, I remember that thirteen uh, three. So it's like ten two. Yeah, because your outfits are what gave you your power. Okay, so it's like 10-2. Yeah, it's extremely just 10-2, basically. Mm, but with okay. I tried playing 10-2 like, when it came out, but I didn't like it. I don't know if I would like it now, but I've heard it's not very good. No, it's not. But damn, do I love that opening song, though. Oh, yeah. The song was so good. Yeah. Yeah, Final Fantasy kind of stopped being good for me after 10, so... I felt betrayed. Hurt. That's why I have no interest in this new one. It just looks so bland. And plus, like, the plots have not been good for a long while. Neither of the characters. Like. Like. Even Ten's characters were kind of shallow. 
Jamie says she has a friend who loves 10 and 10 too, but I can't listen to slander now without an urge to defend it. That's funny. 12 is good, and I will fight for that. I've never played 12. 12 is... Uh, I owned it for the longest time, but I never got around to playing it. Look, Jamie, I know that's you who says 12 is fine, and yeah. it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not. Everything about that game was just really stale. Like... The fine, the combat was fine. I actually enjoyed the way you leveled up. I thought it was very innovative. But man, that Va like Vaughn is the worst fucking protagonist I've ever had to deal with. It should have just stayed as um, as Han Solo as the main character with his hot furry Chewbacca. Mm -hmm. Like again, like the whole game is just basically plot is just Star Wars. Mm, okay. So yeah, I don't know anything about it. Like I kind of wanted to play it, but I didn't like that it wasn't the traditional turn-based you know yeah like, and just it ever since they moved farther away from that i was kind of like uh i'm here for the gameplay and yeah like the style of gameplay like it's you can be like the the last one where it's like oh but it's an amazing action experience with so much action and the action's so fluid and it's fluidy action fluting everywhere and i'm like well that's fine and that's great if you like that i i don't i don't i, I want generic ass turn-based Maybe with some, uh, you know, timing elements mixed in, like Chrono Trigger, how there's like a gauge and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but, like, you know, I'm boring. You know, I'm boring and old school. Like I said, I don't play Fire Emblem for the plot. I can't name more than like four characters, and I don't care who they're fucking. I play that shit so I can have a guy with a sword kill a fucking dude with an axe. <laughs> like, that's what I'm there for. <laughs> it's like, I want someone to shoot a fireball at someone sitting on a dragon, <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, yeah. what's the story of uh, Fire Emblem games? Like, oh... There's going to be a war. There is a war. There's a prince. There's a princess. Something. Something. You hit the B button a lot. That's me. That's my experience on gaming. So, I mean, I don't know. That's uh, what do we got? What's everyone saying here? Uh, oh, should, Jamie says we're fi says we're fighting. I'm gonna get in the car right now. Hey, at least this is the way to get her to come and see us. Yeah, right. Let's um, do it. Um, let's, let's see. Calvin says as soon as he said uh, that, I knew his Jamie would start swinging. <laughs> The main character was supposed to be Ash. Uh, I like how the villain was the one trying to save the world. Yeah. Uh, they have that. It's called Oct yeah Octopath and Bravely Default. Yeah, I've just never played them. I wanted to play them. Yeah, both of those games are really good. Uh, then you kill them anyway. John, John says hashtag plot. So John's here. What up, John? Uh, I think I intended to get around to Bravely Default a while back, but... Vidya Pricey? I don't know what I don't know what Vidya is. It's probably is that a program or something. It's probably just saying the video game's pricey. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it says video pricey, so I was like, I don't know what that means. And now I have money, but no fucks. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I've been there. But yeah, not a fan. Um, it's just not. It's just not the product for me. I've heard that complaint about the about Octopath. That's what Matt said. That the story, the party members felt like a little less connected or whatever. They're not connected at all. Yeah, they're not really, really connected. Yeah. They have like times where they talk to each other, but like only outside of the main plot. Mm -hmm. And like, it's fine. I really enjoyed playing Final Fantasy V again. Um, but like overall, yeah, it's not it's not the best game. In the, um, but it does have a lot of things that I really like in an RPG. And I found it to be very enjoying. And then the, the the plots of the characters do intertwine in a sense that, like, each individual story does connect to each other towards why the ending happens in the, mong in the, in, in the, in the manga in the actual uh, final game. Jamie says, I need to play Tales of Legendia. I started a while ago, but I never finished. It had dancing otters, so obviously game of the decade. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Came yeah, I played a couple of Tales games. They were pretty fun. They're fun to play on multiplayer. I couldn't play them by myself. Yeah, I need to play Tales of Symphonia still. I uh, I got distracted with P5R and then Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, so the reason why uh, you I remember this. You know, you're saying you didn't like Three House, uh, Fire Emblem for story wise, and you're right. Yeah, it's usually there has to be a war things like that. The reason why I liked Three Houses is because I actually liked the dynamic between the three um, factions of the original uh, the original um, you know from the school to the actual war phase and things like that and their ideas yeah i mean that like one that. they make you have to care about it a lot more because yeah. you have to do it which is nice I, stuff. so yeah that is like an integrated part of the game in that one much which, more yeah which i actually think is good uh, when you can do 
you know, have when you have the best of both worlds of like stabby rip, stab, stab. Because what I remember before for like getting supports and stuff is you just have to have people stand next to each other on the battlefield and eventually they'll talk to each other. Yeah, it's kind of similar, but it's usually how that works. It is kind of similar, but there's also scripted ones. Yeah, yeah, there's those cutscenes and things like that. Like, I mean, they have just little cutaways where they talk in the game. But again, also, when I was playing, I wasn't there for, like, min-maxing. I didn't know that was how you, like, super min-maxed your characters. Oh, yeah. So now it's like, well, I go and I look at, like, a whole chart of who talks to who and everything like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I gotta, like, min-max this shit, and I gotta, uh, fucking, um, you know, and if the game has children, you have to get the best children and stuff yeah. like that. Get the right stats. Yeah. I do love that gag where it's like, Krom's holding his child, and he's like, what stats does it have? Yeah, right. <laughs> I fucking love that shit so damn much. Oh, is this the thing with the otters? Okay, this is pretty innovative. Let me see this. It's the dancing otters. Oh, fuck yeah. Calvin says he hopes that the next Final Fantasy will have combat like the remake one. My guess is it will. They will dance the dance of victory. But yeah. Um, what system was this on? Like PS2 and Xbox or something it looks like maybe? It's from 05? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a lot of different games out there. I still think one of my personal favorite games that I actually wouldn't mind replaying is uh, Lost Odyssey. Mm. That was for uh, Xbox 360. Yeah, I remember that game. Uh, I which, didn't play it because I didn't have an Xbox back then. Yeah, that was one of the things that I was like, man, this game really is like never going to see any play because it was on Xbox. Yeah, it was so they could try to sell Xboxes in Japan, if I remember right. Yeah. What company makes that game? Mist Walker. It was made by the same person who made the original Final Fantasy. Mm, okay, yeah. Because I just remember that being a like we we're trying to sell Xbox in Japan game. Yeah, and it game because that game is good. That game has it was on PS2? Okay, nice. Yeah, I could, the graphics look kind of like that, so. I love PS2. PS2 was such a good system. Oh, I know. PS2 single-handedly saved the world. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I remember uh, Console Wars being a lot more interesting. <laughs> no, it's not very interesting. Yeah, I think we're just not as into video games as we used to be back then. Whenever you're into something, it's always more interesting than when you're not. That's true. So. Because there used to be, it used to be like, every day I would go to um, Kotaku, and there was another uh, news website that was, it was before Kotaku was big, and they covered mostly like Japanese and import games. But I don't remember the name of that website. But I would go to it like, Every day, you know, wake up, go to it, get to computer class, go to it, like things like that. Just go look at like video game news, video game everything, like what's happening on all of those sites, you know, and that's like, I don't remember the last time I've been to Kotaku, you what, know. Yeah. I know Kotaku's not good anymore apparently or something, Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a bad example, but, yeah, yeah. you know, just like in generic terms, you know. No, I get it. Like, whatever you, you know, if, if you used to be really, really into it, of course, it's not going to seem as interesting now. I'm pretty sure, like, Calvin is very interested in it, so. Game Tot Game Tatsu? No, I've never heard of this website. It's a website that I don't believe is around anymore. Because I remember at one point, they, like, stopped. I used to like Game Informer a lot. That's used to oh, I used to have a subscription to Game Informer. Yeah. Did I, do I still have those old magazines, or did I throw them away? I know I are threw Are they still out there? Those I, those Game Players ones that oh, I have? Yeah, you still have those. Okay, yeah, those are just cool to look at. They have stuff that's like uh, sneak previews of Game Boy Advance. There's an ad for the original Need for Speed. Things like that. Yeah, I, I that's why I was keeping my old Game Informers for, but then I was like, eh, I don't really need these. 
Oh, console wars are trash. Never mind. I guess we're, I guess we're not the only people. The Game Informer is still rad. Okay, I haven't I haven't really looked through a Game Informer in a while. Yeah, I just couldn't remember if they'd been. Did like... they stop printing it? No, they print it. Did they still print it? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. No, I understand the question on that one. That one's a pretty good question, actually. Yeah, because I actually didn't know if they still printed it. They still do. Because I know I still see it at uh, GameStop every once in a while. Oh, okay. And also, there's a lot of people who just donate them. Mm, got it. Because we'll get a lot of magazines and things like that. Yeah, I used to read Game Informer a lot. Like, I remember we'd go camping for, like, the 4th of July or some sort of holidays, and I would bring the latest magazine with me and just try to read, like, every article on every game. Yeah, I really stuff enjoyed like that. that. If it was the newest one. Yeah. Because I would also, like, make tabs and things like that of games that I was like, oh, this looks like a good game. Mm-hmm. Because I just remember there was a time where Game Informer was, like, getting a lot of shit for um, their reviews on games. I mean, some of them were trash. I know some of them were paid reviews. Yeah. They were, like, paid to make the reviews good. Yeah. This was back before anyone cared about whether the company paid people for good reviews. So that was why, like, there was... A million blogs that were just company sponsored blogs and no one disclosed stuff like that yeah because no one cared and also they didn't really think it was a thing on some of those things because because the internet was really new back then. yeah it was like whoa what you know this the website says it's a person you know like why would the company go out of its way you know yeah do this it's always like that when there's a new form of communication like Companies and advertisement on it are can be very effective in new ways that people aren't used to. That's why radio ads were so effective. Yeah. And television ads were so effective back then. And eventually we grow like numb to it. You know, you, you're like, oh, this is a commercial. They're going to tell me whatever. It's like, oh, this is a commercial for something that's for guys. So they're going to try to emasculate you and make you buy it. Or like, oh, this is a commercial for something for women. They're going to make you feel uh, insecure about your image to get you to buy it. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. You, once you learn the trick, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. But when it's a brand new, like form, you're not used to it yet. Yeah. So, at least that's my take on it. Ha being such a, a fan of advertisement and the history of advertisement. Don Draper. Dude, I wish Don Draper's a G man. He killed people. He did. He did. He killed people in the war. Yeah. <laughs> And coming back as a dead guy, that's dope. Just take over this guy. I wish I'd watch more of that show. Actually, I've only seen a couple episodes. But I like the character of John Draper. Yeah. It's really cool. That actor is cool, too. John Hamm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we supposed to like Don Draper? Am I just... Is John Draper my Joker? <laughs> I don't really know. I don't know anymore either. <laughs> I just know if you like something, it's probably wrong. Oh, that's so true. You're probably... Well, I like this picture, so it must be trash then. It is, yeah. You're yeah. absolutely correct. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. You goddamn son of a bitch. Got him. No, I've... I, um... I like the idea of watching games much more now than playing them. And now that Twitch is a thing, it's like much easier to just do that. Because I used to just like watching Mike play games. At some point, it was kind of like, playing the games isn't really for me anymore. Yeah, sometimes So I like is. watching them. Again, yeah, some games I'm like more into watching them too. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I really prefer stories to games. Like there were certain games that I just was like, oh, I don't really have time to play. So I'll just have it on in the background so I can listen to the story while I work. Yeah, exactly. And now, also, I like to watch like some of those weird runs that people do, you know, like in um, all the Souls games where they have like no hit runs yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And it's like, I would never try to do that because that sounds infuriating to learn. Yeah. And like, I don't want to spend my time doing it, but I'll listen to someone who's done that and I appreciate them, you know, like they have skill, they've done it, you know, yeah. things like that. Like, and plus, um, when it comes to like games and stuff like that, I kind of find it frustrating uh, in the sense of like, 
it depends on the game. Um, but there's a lot of games that I'm like, oh, I really enjoy this game. But then there's like a competitive scene for it, and you're like, uh, I just want to have fun. And then, but having fun is wrong, you know. A PS One game called Moon. Are you have you heard of this, Matt? Uh, what kind of moon? It just says Moon. It's just a PS One game called Moon. I'm about to Google it real quick. Moon remix. Everything. No, I've never even seen this game. Huh. <laughs> the little blurb sounds hilarious. Hmm? I guess it's mentioned that it got a localization at some point, like last year or something. Oh, you know what game, actually speaking of games that looked interesting, because uh, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Vanillaware, the Vanillaware franchise. Yeah. Um, they make a lot of really cool side-scrolling 2D games that just look really like paintings. They did like, you know, Odin Sphere, um, um, are we Muramasa. Sub are we subtweeting Smash? I don't understand what that means. Those Those are words that I don't know. I don't know what subtweeting is, and I'm guessing Smash is referring to Smash Bros, but other than that, I don't know. We're old, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I didn't even know you could subtweet stuff. Now, where do I find that? Can I Google a uh, YouTube tutorial on how to subtweet? I legit Google tutorials on how to use social media. You so. think social media is fun? It's not fun. It's not for me, but it's a business tool. That's all I care about for it. Honestly. I know it's just funny when you say because I just listened to the um, uh, Azokan thing. Yes. Oh, you look like you're so much fun on Twitter. Do you think this is fun? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing fun about social media. Yeah. Fucking my balls. Calling something out in a subtle way. Oh, I thought that was just like you just say low key on that. So okay. So are we subtweeting Smash? I, I don't remember what we said, but like probably Pro Pro Smash. Oh, uh, he's talking fuck about everything. Well, fuck it all. I don't subtweet. Fuck subtweeting. The only subtweet I do is if I tweet about going to Subway. Sure, buddy. Uh, no, he, he's, he's, he's talking about how we're, we uh, ragged on competitive gaming. Oh, oh. I didn't rag on competitive I did. gaming. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I mean, look, people can compete at whatever they want. You know what I fucking miss watching that I haven't watched in forever? Hmm. Fucking Lumberjack games. That shit used to come on TV. Random times during the day sometime. Whenever. You get to watch people competitively cut logs. That's fucking sweet. They got chainsaws. Dude, two guys with a fucking chainsaw just going ham on a giant, like, tree. You know, seeing who can fuck it up the fastest. That's amazing to watch, alright? Anyone can become competitive at anything. It's only cool if, like, you give a shit about it, though. And if you convince other people to give a shit about it. I don't know. My, my thing is that, like... So that's me. That's my idea of competitive anything. My problem. So here's my problem is that like when you start equating certain things to your worth that aren't really worth your time. You know what I mean? That's when that's when I get a little like, OK, let's not, you know? Well, I mean, the thing is that, though, it's worth their time, though. Yeah, I'm just telling you, this is where I'm at. Like when it's like um, someone tells me I need to get good at X game or at X thing, I'm like, look, I'm here to have fun. And then they start like, you know, berating you, calling you oh, well, casual. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, well, the game is meant to be fun. If I'm, you know. The game I, is meant to sell. Yeah. Or, that's different. I mean, to me, it's meant to be fun. Like, I'm to you, you got it to have fun. Yeah. That's different. That's not the meaning of it. Look, <laughs> the meaning is to have fun. A game is meant to be fun. The meaning you put into it is to have fun. Look, a game is fun. The meaning of it is to have fun. Yeah. That you're bringing to it. No. I don't I don't think everyone who was playing the ancient, like, death football soccer Aztec game was there for fun. Okay? Some people might have brought the meaning of fun to it. Other people brought the meaning of, you know, like, bringing blood for Quetzalcoatl or whatever. Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. So, like, I don't think a game has to inherently be designed for fun. I think it does. I'd say you're wrong. I'd say you're wrong. Okay, then. Well, then we'll put two sheets of plexiglass between us and have a debate. <laughs> and I guarantee you, the fly will land on you, Matthew. Because you are the demon. <laughs> exactly. What about sports? These sports are meant to be competitive. They're made to be competitive. 
That's... But like part of the people who enjoy competition. Yeah. But there are people who also don't enjoy the thing they do competitively. Yeah. So they're not there for fun. You bring your own meaning to things. I don't know. Things, I... I don't believe things generally have a meaning. I believe things have a purpose. And meaning and purpose are different to me. In my dictionary, those are two different words with two different definitions. Yeah, I just don't find that, um, what is it? I just, like sports, I don't find them to have any purpose or anything like that. See, you don't have a purpose. So you're different. You're looking at it for like the meaning of it. I'm just saying like... Sports have a purpose. I just don't think that being competitive is all that great. Okay, well, see, that's a different argument, though. That's a different argument from sports don't have a purpose. They don't, but they uh, also are just, I don't know, again, they don't... I'm not talking about sports, I'm talking about games in general. So Where... now we're talking about games and not no, sports. No, no, fuck you, fuck no, you. No, you keep changing the I'm goalpost. Not... He's no. moving the goalpost, Chad. No, I was first talking about games in general, then you guys keep adding in other shit. Fuck I've you. I've never added anything. Fuck you. My opponent is a liar. Fuck you. I don't think he's listening to the will of the American people. The American people fucking <laughs> suck my dick. Evolution would like to have a word with you. Exactly. Exactly. Meow. I'm a dumb Christian. Of course oh, I don't no, believe in evolution. Oh no, the kitty is... Oh, he wants blood. He's so cute when he wants blood. There were some markers in the chat there. Life is a competition. No. People compete. Uh, not really. Life is just kind of like, you know, you exist and then you have to wait to die. It's life like, is a competition for resources. Uh, That's no, how life works. Not really. Not in this day and age. Okay. You just go fucking to work and get a paycheck, go home, and then that's it. That's all there is to it. You just wait to die. Like, that's all that is. There's something competition about that. You just wait to die. That's modern Western society. That's not life. That's your that's uh, I mean, that's your experience. That is where I'm living, so therefore it is my life. It's just waiting to die. So I'm killing time by doing this. Mm. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, pretty much. It's like we we just have too many different definitions of things. We could never see eye to eye in this timeline, Matthew. But I respect you. That's I, okay. I believe you. <laughs> but that was a lie. All right, Jamie, have fun. Hope you get to be the traitor. <laughs> Just the right amount of sus. I'm telling you, change your character's name to sus. That's what Devin did. It's just the right amount. It came out pretty good flipping it. Mm -hmm. Told you, man. I'm not fucking working hard. Working smart. Mm -hmm. stuff to talk about don't you not really no i'm a boring person what? this is the hardest part of the stream is to what? find things to talk about you're boring wes yeah i don't believe it oh okay all of everyone has ever told me you are nothing but an interesting person mm. that must have been the other me they met the me from the wired whoa <laughs> Oh, actually, it's funny. We were at we were at Kinokuni. My that... sus soul dwells within a sus mind and a sus body. Oh my god, that's funny. What was I saying? Oh, uh, at uh, Kino, they were playing that opening. Which one? The the Zero Experiments Lane. Oh, were they? Yeah. Nice. I was like, oh shit, what the fuck? Nice. Yeah, we're almost done with that. 
I think we've got uh, two episodes. Maybe two or one or two. Yeah. Should be two. I believe that was episode eleven, uh, last episode. I thought there were only uh, twelve episodes in this show. Uh, no, I believe there's thirteen episodes. Really? Yeah, they used to do thirteen episodes. I couldn't remember if it was thirteen or twelve. No, I remember being randomly kind of a weird number. That's all. I'm pretty sure it's thirteen. Uh, I can double check again, but yeah, you're probably right. But I'm just like kind of like remembering it having a weird number. Just because I know we're getting to the end of most of our shows. Yeah. Like, Wojakoi will be over when we go to watch it. Yeah. Um, and we're caught up on Golden Kamui almost. Yeah, because so. there's only one more episode, I think, before uh, yeah. the season ends. Yep. Oh shit, Gerardo's here. What up? How's it going, dude? Hanging out. Chilling out. We're, uh, we're off the Yu-Gi-Oh art, so sorry to disappoint, but we are doing Soul Eater. Yeah. Homeboy Death the Kid. The Gary Oak of Soul Eater. The Gary Oak of Soul Eater, man. The Gary Oak of Soul Eater. I do love that he had, like, a skateboard. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. He's hip with the kids. I know, right? He got the skateboard that we didn't get in Gold and Silver. Damn, fucker. <laughs> Piece of shit. It went straight to him. That son of a bitch. Yeah. I'll kill you, Death the Kid. Yeah, I remember that uh, rumor, and then everyone called, um, oh, what is that Pokemon? Azul or Az, whatever. The Absolutely. first, the first, no, 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 the first, uh, the blue round one. From Gen 2. This is Gen oh, 2, uh, Meryl. Meryl, yeah. Everyone was like, it's Pika Blue. Pika Blue, yeah, I remember that. Because there had been like a rumor or something that that would be a thing. And then there was a... Because there was a, like a rumor to other form of Pikachu. And then that came out. And everyone was like, oh, it's Pika Blue. And then it's like, no, it's just a new Pokemon. It's a completely new Pokemon. It's not related to any Pokemon. And it was like, oh shit, what? <laughs> like, for some reason, the idea that they could make new Pokemon that were not linked to the ones before it was like mind blowing, kind yeah. of, if I remember. It's like, wait, what? It's just a new Pokemon? <laughs> what like, the fuck? completely new? Yeah, Meryl, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said no. I, I know, no, I'm cool. I looked at chat, chat, no. Oh, okay. Too, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Death Battle had a battle with Krona and Venom. Oh, that's cool. Who won? Probably Venom. Uh, yeah. It's a comic book character. Yeah, comic book characters usually win. Comic book characters are super broken. Oh, Krona won? Nice. Okay, Fuck sick. Yeah. All right. Okay, I am redeemed. I, I am Death Battle is redeemed in my eyes. Yeah, right. I actually don't know, like, enough about Venom to know, like... That that one doesn't feel like super obvious. I just guessed because yeah. half the time American comic book characters like somewhere in their lore they're like, and then they gained the power of God, you know, yeah. for forty seven and a half seconds when the they merged with the God multiverse in multiverse issue verse ninety seven issue forty six B from the back of the cereal box, you know, something like that. Because some of those characters are so oversaturated with media. I know. It's just funny it's to me. It's awful. It's the worst. <laughs> Damn, of course Corona is going to win. Have you seen America? That's funny. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Get off the stage! <laughs> Some of those, I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah, when it was like Optimus Prime versus a Gundam, you're like, oh man. Yeah, exactly. Those are completely different. Those parts. are two different. This is a this is a living robot being that is also broken and has way more media than just the Gundam. <laughs> Some of them are just kind of unfair like that. Yeah, but you know, life. Yeah. Again, like Superman versus anyone. You don't, it'd have to be like, I don't even know. It has to be a gag character. Gag characters are always broken. Pretty much. Pretty much. It wouldn't need to be something like that. It would need to be like, 
Superman versus Jesus and Buddha from uh, All Young Saints or whatever that is. Yeah, Saint Young Men. Saint Young Men. It would have to be that fight to beat Superman. <laughs> God, I hate Superman. I just don't understand why fucking Shane was just Bro, but he's on a real dick. adult hero. On his fucking dick. Dude. He has bills to pay. He has action bills. <laughs> just on his dick, man. I just, I just never understood. I love that shit. That was so funny to listen to his Superman rants. I was talking to Devin about that. I was like, man, I, I miss like just hearing Shane say stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because he always had something crazy to say. Yeah, he just he just went, went off the floor. Batman fight. is just a juvenile power fantasy. Superman, that's a real adult hero. I just, I don't know what to tell He's you. He's an man. adult hero. <laughs> it was like just amazing to hear that. Like he went absolutely insane. I loved it. I just never know what to think about that. Like, oh, that we knew him. I loved it. At one point, we knew Shane. I know. I wonder I wonder how being a bridge demon's going. Just text him that. <laughs> oh, no. Text him that in the screenshot of it? No, no. Just legit text him. No context. <laughs> just like, hey, man. How's it being, feel being a bridge demon? How's being the bridge demon going? Do you get Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, man. Just do it. Fuck it. <laughs> That's too funny. Damn, this looks sweet though. Oh. It's Death the Kid. Don't fuck with Death the Kid. What's he gonna do after I text him? Probably nothing. Probably right? nothing. I guess you're right. I mean, but I'm not, like, I don't know. Everyone thinks I want to be the meanest person in the world. I'm like, I'm usually, I try not to be mean, and then everyone's like, no, that's who you are, Wes. It's really funny. Continue to be mean to people. So, yeah, maybe I should text him. <laughs> I mean, I'm not telling it because that's what you are. I'm telling it because what you should do. Ah, you're right. It's Gosh, what I should like, do. You're right. Look, I don't know if you've met me, Wes. I've never once attributed anything to you. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Not anything at least malicious like that. The only person I've ever attributed anything that was malicious was uh, when Austin stole everything from us. That's true. Him and Sean stole all our stuff. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. So... Live by the you live by the Pharaoh's honor, you die by the Pharaoh's honor. So yeah, like this is the only person I've ever attributed malice to, and Eric, I guess. <laughs> and Eric. That's because Eric and I've been married for way too long. <laughs> is he gonna leave the bridge? That's fun. Now I'm thinking he's like stoop kid. <laughs> stoop kids afraid to, bridge demons afraid to leave the this bridge. Bridge, bridge demons. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. Bridge demons afraid to leave the bridge. But yeah, no. Nah, That's now. pretty funny. It's like when Eric was talking about how he was going to be annoyed when he was going to be a cancer survivor. Uh, how everyone's going to talk about how motivational his story was and how like it, they're now like outlook on life will be changed. I'm like Eric, I wanted to make sure you understand. <laughs> Never in my life have I ever looked at your life and say, <laughs> "I want to be like that." <laughs> oh my god, that is savage. Like I. <laughs> Like, you've never once made anything on me want to change for the better. That is savage. Oh you, my god. The, the only thing that I've ever done to change my life because of your actions was be like, I never want to be that. Oh man. Yeah, he was, uh... He was That's like, ridiculous that he sent that. Yeah. Wow. That guy sends some crazy shit sometimes. Yeah, he was, like, worried that we would all start, like, treating him differently and, like, how we'd all be like, oh, you're just so motivational. It made me want to live. I'm like, bro, you've never made me want to live once. And most of the time, you make me want to die. Sheesh. Actually, let me pull that chat. Uh, that text up. Okay. Let's not. Let's not air that on stream. Let's but, not get this in depth. That's fair. Like, yeah, no, he's, he's like, uh nah, he's... It's a weird dude. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> Gerard was like, "Oh my god, lol." <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I I'm gonna, I'm. You don't have to. I'm just gonna say one more thing. Sure, sure. That sounds incredibly narcissistic. Uh, yeah, he's not a very. Uh, That's like insane to just be like, "Well, now obviously everyone's gonna be so motivated by me and tell me how motivated they are," and it's. It's just going to be miserable. I'm going to have to live with everyone adoring me. You know? I'm like, look, man, you're another fucking cancer survivor. Like, get in line. Like, don't, no one cares about that kind of stuff until after you die. Like, hello. 
And the cat is here. You can come in. What's up, cat? Are you here for blood? <laughs> Absolutely, he is. Everyone, Sabrina's here. And so is the cat. Yo. <laughs> we were talking about how now Eric is uh, mad that everyone would be so motivated by his battle against cancer. Huh? What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I came in right in the middle of the discussion. <laughs> oh. This cat better be happy. You're playing Chinese ba uh, Breath of the Wild knockoff? Oh, the uh, impact game or whatever, right? Oh, shut up, your kitty. <laughs> oh, he says I want down. Alright. I must go cry in the hallway more. There it is. <laughs> He's going to hunt. Okay. Uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Yeah. in here. <laughs> right. You surprised how much you liked it? Yeah, Devin was uh, watching someone play it. It actually didn't seem like a bad game, other than, like, it's randomly a gotcha game. Yeah, and also you can't say anything about Taiwan or Hong Kong, and you get man if, uh, or you'll get banned. I mean, it's Chinese. What yeah. do you expect? I know. It's just, that's the other thing that you're... It's part of the feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a wonderful feature, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Well, I mean, why would you want to say anything about them? I mean, they're just normal parts of China that they, you know, don't need to be mentioned separately at all. That's just China Island and the uh, other China place. That's it. That's all those are, right? Right, obviously. Yeah, that's it. There's no war outside of Boston, say. Yeah, exactly. I did like how it was just exactly Breath of the Wild, though. Yeah. It was just, ex it was Breath of the Wild, it looked like Breath of the Wild mixed with a korean mmo yeah yeah i definitely had that vibe. like but the characters were very anime-ish instead of how they are in korean mmos they're but, but they're pretty. like but they're dressed kind of like in the like you know obviously more skimpy kind of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. I but i don't know it's weird it's it's like yeah it's definitely one of those this is an asian like rpg that it has ads you know that yeah. they're like don't tell your game don't tell your friends you're playing this yeah, that kind of thing yeah, yeah. kind of gives me one of those vibes a little bit don't <laughs> you won't you last, last five minutes, minutes in this yeah. game okay. yeah. oh, God. give me a little bit of those but like it's it was less pornographic you know when i actually saw it played yeah but the characters are obviously still like meant to be your fetish you're supposed to want to fuck them yeah you have a you have a laundry list of characters who all hit one of those characters should hit some fetish you like Vanilla, succubus. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lolly, who <laughs> says some shit like Jailbait. that. Jailbait. Jailbait, that's what she says, yeah. Jailbait, yeah. And incest. Yeah. Yeah, I could use a furry. Yeah. It hasn't been lewd. It looked kind of lewd. Like, the air girl was, like, flying. You could look up her skirt. Disgusting, Wes, when you would look up their skirt. I didn't do that. That was on stream. How could you? I mean, I guess technically it could still have highly fetishized characters without being lewd. I mean, yeah. So. I'd maybe try to even out the watercoloring a little bit. Where at? Or is it just from my side? But this side looks darker. This side just, like, the whole side looks darker. Than oh, that's what you mean. So. Let me just grab a marker for that. Yeah, you could probably fix it with some markers or something. Do you see what I mean, though? Yeah, I saw what you mean. Okay. That's what we have these markers for. Yeah, I just didn't want it to be. No, I totally, yeah, uh, I get you. I know there's not a lot there, so. What the fuck? I don't know, it's probably the cat knocking over or something. He's been playing with that bag a lot. <laughs> and he like, it was hilarious because he knocked it over and then he couldn't like get, or no, first he was trying to get into it and he couldn't. So Devin tipped it over for him. Then, Earlier today, he was so excited. He was playing on top of the other box that's next to it. He was like rolling around trying to like get at me. And then he rolled right off onto it and crushed it. <laughs> so now it's not very open like for him to look into. It's like really smushed. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. All right. Now we're on to the real main character. Obviously. Uh, let's take five. I'm going to use the restroom. Okay. You, uh, what is this? You have to really try to see that, but yeah, it does have most anime tropes. Oh, okay. Now we're going to take a break real quick. I'm going to roll the BRB screen. We'll be back in a couple minutes.
Yeah, I just realized it's been like an hour and a half. Damn. Thanks for everyone for stopping by. Yeah, this one's going to be a bit short. Uh, we're only doing three pieces on this one. Um, uh, I think we're going to do three, no, four on Saturday. Four on Saturday. Yeah. yeah so, well, I'll be right back. Hey. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we just walked back in the room and we saw your comment, Ash. That was pretty funny. Oh, man. Also, Devin says he's finished Monster Hunter. He says he's finished it. Yeah. He, beat, he says it's done. He beat the game. He says him and his crew have beaten it. They're done. They've done everything, and so they've moved on to Fantasy Star Online now. I don't know why, how they managed to make it worse. I don't know. I don't know. But they did. Kudos to them. I just can't get into Fantasy Star Online because I remember in high school, one of our friends who was like the, uh, the weirder friend, he just like... Always had the manual for the game on him because he had it on GameCube. He just always had it on him, and he was like a Jehovah's Witness for that game. He was just like, "Have you heard of Fantasy Star like Online Two or whatever it was? I forgot. The, maybe it's Online or whatever. I forgot exactly what it was called, but he just had it." <laughs> Damn, you're saying it's a downgrade? That's fucking funny. It is though. <laughs> yeah, he just had the manual on him like all the time. It was in his jacket pocket, like in the in the secret pocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at a moment's notice, he's like, bro, we could go play some Fantasy Star. Like, come on, let's do this. You know, like, no, let's not do this. Let's never do that. It's like, okay. I played a little on Dreamcast. Yeah. I always wanted to get into MMOs. It just never, never really ended up happening. Yeah, the yeah. only MMO I played a lot was, uh, wow, that was it. I think. And Guild Wars. Yeah. Because I, pl I played Guild Wars when it was in beta, the first one. And that was pretty fun. It's because I really can't really... I just can't do games where there's no purpose. Mm -hmm. like there's no there's no plot to be advanced. There's no... Yeah, we've had a talk about MMOs before. Like, that, yeah. yours is the, like, no, no nothing. My other thing is, like, when the game becomes a chore. Yeah. And, like, at a certain point when you play some of those games and you've done, like, the story or whatever, and you have to keep doing something over and over, you know, as a chore... Like, oh, it's it's that time of day. I need to go get I need to go get fifty of these things or whatever. It's time for my dick flattening. Yeah, you know. Something like that. Yeah, it can become a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was kinda like here to do whatever and then you know, I have fun with people and then now it's like, Hey man, where are you where are you at? We have to go get this stuff and we have to do whatever and we have to stuff with the thing is like nah nah we don't have to do shit i'm gonna watch anime <laughs> like yeah. i'm done <laughs> that or like uh where they're like you have to get good or you have to be this level if you want to play with us you know, well like, i don't mind that if i'm if i'm into it at the moment or whatever. yeah but i mean like it's just annoying because it becomes very exclusionary very quick warframe in a nutshell after finishing the star chart yeah i've seen that game it's so grindy i don't know how y'all do it You were addicted to Final Fantasy fourteen for a bit, but you'd still recommend it. Yeah, I have heard that that's one of the, like... Yeah, it's one of the better Better ones. quote ones? I, I don't really know. But maybe it's better managed? I'm it's it's sure. it's a better balanced and a better managed. And also it has more of the actual Final Fantasy elements that you mm -hmm. want in a game that that is like that. Like, whenever I played... When I was playing, um, was it Dot .hack? Mm -hmm. uh, their, their version of the world was the kind of game I wanted to play. Got you. And Final Fantasy XIV really was good about um, you know delivering a game that felt like that at least. Dude, I love Die Hack. I, I kind of want that franchise to come back and be good. Last time it came back, it yeah, wasn't that great. No, no, it was not. <laughs> so I kind of would hope they'd come back, but I don't know if they can since Sword Art kind of like controls that whole thing. Sword yeah. Art and Log Horizon kind of have that market eaten up. That, well, to be fair, most of those games, like even uh, what is it, uh, Overlord's kind of like that too. That's true. Like, so, there's a lot. It would just kind of be, like... Yeah, it'll just get lost in the mix. Yeah, it won't be anything other than, like, you know... Whatever. It's another game isekai. Yeah. So, people won't... I actually wouldn't... I'd just like it better, like, set in the game, you know? It doesn't need to be an isekai anymore, because I already have that, but... Yeah. And they have shows that are like that, where they're just in a game, and it's not an isekai, I think, right? Yeah. So it's also like um, frustrating too, because like uh, most of the stuff when it came to like making game, uh, making anime or media that was about being uh, 
in a game or about the internet and things like that, most of those don't really have anything interesting going on for them because there's nothing really new to talk about. Yeah. Because when Dot Hack was like new, it was talking about like consciousness and things like that. Yeah. And most people are like, yeah, I've heard that fucking shit, you know, a million times now. Yeah. So there's no real new thing you can add to the conversation, so. Oh, really? Nobody uh, does much Warframe anymore? Gerardo says out of it, uh, everyone who played, uh, he's kind of the only one who logs in, uh, logs on for a bit now. That's yeah. interesting. That sounds like about right, because John, uh, most of the time he never talks about Warframe anymore. That's true, and John just has, his job is really heavy. That job is a lot yeah mentally it's been uh, yeah it seems like it's always like it was tough on me and it seems like it's tough on him he's a little better about it but yeah he's not gonna have time because he's you know that job you work from like shit well my shift was like 11 to like it's allegedly like 8 o'clock that shit was never over at 8 o'clock no. I would do 11 to 11 some days. Yeah. I'm not shocked, though, that a company that bought it, like, like y'all's model, was like, oh, yeah, we're definitely overworked the fuck out of these people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's weird because you can just leave whenever you... You can, you can leave, but, like, I don't know. I'm bad about getting guilted into shit. Plus, it's like, well, there's just going to be more shit tomorrow for me to do if I don't finish it now anyway. Yeah. So that's when you have to have the philosophy of, well, if it can't be, if whatever I can't do today, I do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I have a really bad, like, I don't, when stuff piles up, it starts to get to me. So it's just like, oh man. And that job was legitimately just everything piles up the job. So it's like, no matter how much you do, it just piles up more and more. Even if you get it done or whatever, it just keeps piling up. So it's like, not the best. Mm hmm. It's a very, like, Sisyphus, like, rock up the hill kind of thing. You know? I mean, that's every job, too, though, if you think about it. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. When I worked at the mall, it wasn't like that. Even when it was busy, it wasn't like that. I guess. I just, uh, I know that, like, most jobs are, like, you think you're done, and then the next day you come back and there's another thing to do, so. Ah, uh, well, but, I don't know, it's not this, they don't have you write, like, the same report over and 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 over, and over again all day, and then... Like, and they just keep coming in. It's not like you write, like, I don't know. It's like if you have to type the notes up for one of your meetings or something, and then you just have to keep typing it up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And then it's like, oh, hey, you, we need you to type up the notes from yesterday's meeting again all day today. <laughs> you know, like that. Like you're doing the same thing all the time. Mm, yeah, I guess. Versus, like, you say you're doing the same thing all the time, but you're not just putting things in a box all the time for 12 hours on end. To go do it the next day again, you know? I mean, books on the shelf. Yeah, but you also do something else. Like, at that job, like, I would stand, I would usually just stand there, you know, do the thing, type the thing, get on the forklift. It's, it's very much, like, even, I imagine, like, even your job is nowhere near as, like, the same thing all the time. I don't know. I don't like, I know, you, I know you're going to say it is because you live it. So, yeah, I mean, but you didn't live my job, so I didn't. But I'm not trying to say that your job is like w was worse or better than mine. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying yeah. that the concept of you know doing the same thing over and over again is the same. I guess because you're gonna. I, I feel like I feel like you probably have at least more thing. You have a wider variety. Okay, you have a wider variety of things you do. Not at the moment. Be, not maybe not now, but in, on a general day. Because, like, in retail, like, when we worked at the store, even when it was busy, like, Christmas, it's not really... It, it, the the people coming in and out make the experience different. Yeah, but it, it's... It's why I like retail. If it's in a good environment. No, I get you. The reason why I'm saying it's just the same thing every day... <laughs> Stop trying to compete with Matt. He said he doesn't like competition. That's yeah, right. Funny. Yeah, I'm not even trying to compete here. It's just, like, I'm trying to explain. <laughs> it's fine. We'll just drop it. It's yeah. not in it. It's not important. Yeah, it's just, uh, no one like whenever we start talking about something, neither of us is in a position to convince the other person of anything. We just kind of waste time. Yeah, I mean, so at least it keeps the air dead, not dead. But let's go back to RuneScape. Gerardo says he's just playing RuneScape. It's so weird how RuneScape has come back with a vengeance. Oh yeah, it's so weird. It's like I don't know. I just always feel like that. There's just. Like, so many companies seem to have an inability to make anything new. That everyone, like, 
because that's my thing of like that's why nostalgia i kind of like i feel like the world's kind of like a little stagnant you know like we got to a point where it was better to just keep doing the things we'd done before like in, in um in art this way but yeah in, you know because it's like well now that information can stay around forever why should it why should i not you know again why shouldn't we just make runescape again you know if runescape classic you know yeah, yeah like wow classic you know it's like we fucked these things up beyond belief but they were good at one point and, and, you know and we can bring that back because we can because things can stay around forever so it's the same with rewatching shows a hundred times, which I've done before too. I mean, watching shows I feel is fine because like, so, but it's the same with rebooting things all the time. Rebooting it, well, I feel like well, maybe not. No, nah, rebooting that's things different. are fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about specifically where it's the like, the really big like, why should I? You know, I'm just gonna watch The Office a thousand times. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess. Um, usually, I, w- I wouldn't recommend that, but um, but you know what I mean, though. I know what you mean. But, like, I feel like it's a little different depending on what you're rewatching, or... Because, like, it's when some... Like, my, my dad used to give me shit for, like, buying books. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, well, why did you buy the book? Are you going to read it again? And I'm like, you know, the story's not going to change. I'm like, well, yeah, but, like, mm-hmm. it still evokes the feelings. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't know what to tell you on that regards. I'm like... I don't know. I just, like... I don't know. Maybe it was just from hanging around Parker so much that I'm just like, man, fuck nostalgia. <laughs> well, no, nostalgia is definitely, I think, wrong. Don't get me wrong. Because I think nostalgia is definitely bad and does inhibit growth. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. No, that's I'm, a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I was trying to get to. I yeah. just didn't have a word of voice of it. It was, uh, yeah, nostalgia is like when it inhibits growth is bad. It's the, like, but you can still enjoy something like that was something from another time. Being like, oh yeah, I like I I like this book because you know this book mm-hmm. or the show is good. It made me feel things and it reminds me of X Y Z thing. Now, if it becomes something that becomes just your you know you you you're unable to hand. you're unable to move on you know mm-hmm. and realize well yes the office is great but there are other shows out there you know that are probably equally as good uh, or that's fine. But if you start saying like no the only good show is the office and you're like well that's that's bad you should. You know, and you're, it's like the kid who's not going to eat anything other than the PB and J. He's never going to grow. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's what I would say. It's like nostalgia is fine in small doses. It's just really bad whenever it becomes something that just really inhibits you from growing as a person. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we've just gotten old and we don't know any of the new things that are good because we've shunned the new. Uh, maybe tiktok is good maybe tiktok is good to be on you know and we've just shunned it i don't know anything i, I don't would, know i i wouldn't say that i would never go that far uh tiktok's probably bad just because of the fact that it's you know uh, spyware or whatever calvin says plus you can books on a shelf and be like look at all my knowledge yeah you think you would think my mom has uh, tons of books on a shelf she's never read yeah. They're for when I get or get around to them. That's what she says. Yeah. She said they were for when she retired, but now she just does puzzles. She didn't have the puzzles on the shelf at first for when she retired. She bought them after she retired. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she had a ton of books to read. Yeah, again, like... So, it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, but... Uh, I made a move, I've made a move point of at least reading most of the books on the shelf here, especially right after I buy them. Um, yeah, I, I try. I, I used to have a bad habit of buying books that I just thought seemed cool that I would get to. Yeah. Um, so if I buy a book, I generally read it. So well, that's just what happens when you start going to like Goodwill all the time or places like that. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, well, it's only like a dollar for this like book. It sounds really cool, and you know, I'm reading a little bit of it, and it's kind of cool. You know, I'll get to it. Yeah. You won't. No, you won't. <laughs> you won't. Yeah, you never do. You never do. So. Just one of those things. Yeah, I still can't understand why people love The Office so much. I, I apologize, Chad, if I'm now going to alienate y'all for forever. I just, I, I can't. I just never got it. I couldn't get into it. I never understood why anyone thought it was funny. It's just a lot of cringe humor. I thought it was okay when I watched it the first time. And then, uh... 
It's a lot of that. I think it was just the just seeing it a hundred times. Just I was like, yeah, no. It's also, just, there are some characters that are not very good. Yeah, it's just a lot of awkward humor. Like I would rather. Yeah. Like if you want to watch a show, if I wanted to watch a show that's like kind of similar to The Office, I'll legit just go watch Parks and Rec because that show's actually good. And yeah. it actually makes me laugh. Like, How much did you watch of it, Matt? That's what Calvin wants to know. Uh, I watched like multiple seasons, random episodes here and there that were just on uh, whenever I was at Parker's house. And I'm just like, man, these are not, this is not funny. Like, I've, I probably watched most of the show based upon just being around it that often. I forgot how many seasons I watched straight through. Uh, not like at one sitting, but I mean, you know, like, in general, uh, I, yeah. I started on episode one and I got here and then I quit watching and I just know what happened. Yeah. yeah. Cause I also don't know. Cause sometimes it's just kind of like, Oh, there's that scene where they did whatever. Like, that's how I remember stuff a lot of times. Yeah. I can't remember it like specifically, you know? And then everyone's like, oh, like it also didn't help that like, uh, date any dating app that you were on. Everyone was talking about how they wanted to have, they, they were at Pam and they wanted to find their gym and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that didn't help. But that that definitely is uh, uh, something else that I thought was really bad. I was like, it's not it wasn't that great of a romance. Season one is cringe as fuck. It's dry humor. Yeah, it's because it's meant to be a British show. Yeah, it's a like, parody of a British show. Yeah, it's a oh. British show. Yeah. So like, you know, I like I like uh, some British shows. Some are pretty good. So. But that is like how their humor is. Like, um, uh, is Todd Margaret actually British? I can't remember if that show is British or no. It's not British, but it's it feels like it's a British show. Or isn't that what's called the Increasingly Bad Decisions of Todd Margaret or something uh, like I that? I don't know that one. Uh, that that show is like hyper cringe. But man, was it fucking funny? Because it had the dude who was uh, Tobias in it. You'd rather watch the British version of The Office? Yeah. I'd really just rather watch Office Space. Oh, I love it. Yeah, Increasingly Bad Decisions of Todd Margaret. So Office Space is a good fucking movie. Yeah, increase, oh, Increasingly Poor Decisions is the actual name. There it is. So it was pretty funny, but it was super cringe. But, uh, what is this? Rather watch the British uh, Ash. Oh, I, have, I otherwise only know it from the memes. That's funny. Yeah, most of the, uh, the office is just a giant uh, meme now. Yeah. It will live on forever as a meme. There's a lot of shows that I feel like are um, just like, they were good to watch when they were coming out. Yeah. Like that's that's how I feel about a lot of animes is it's like, you know, they were really good. They were good to watch when they were coming out. I wouldn't recommend watching them now. Things like that. Like I uh, like how everyone really likes Friends and I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's okay. Yeah, I like the first the first few seasons of Friends, but like I wouldn't just be like you guys should watch Friends. I probably wouldn't recommend... Like, if someone asked me, I, I, I would have to know this person. Because, like, one, comedy doesn't age well, generally. No. Because uh, I actually remember, like, when they put Friends on Netflix and, like, a lot of younger people were, like, complaining about how uh, just, offensive. like, offensive the show was. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And that's true, because comedy has changed, especially now over time, because, like, groups of people that, uh, you know, it used to be much more accepted to make them the butt of jokes yeah. than it is now. You know, there used to be words you couldn't, there were words you could say you can't say now. There are things like that, so. Yeah. You know. And they weren't, like, doing it to be malicious. It was just like, that was just what he did at the time. Yeah. Now, maybe that's inherently malicious or whatever, but systemically malicious. But I don't, I don't think it was intentionally malicious on the part of the writers. Yeah. That's how I would put that. Also, just the ridiculous idea that they could even live at all in New York City. 
<laughs> I forgot, but I remember that was a thing at the time where people would were like talking about how expensive it would actually be to live in those apartments they were in. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've shown you more cringe movies, but at least they were funny, so it's or so bad it's good. Oh yeah, definitely. Friends is a hard okay. Yeah, like I said, I I like I could rewatch some episodes of Friends, but I wouldn't go out of my way to to tell someone like, "Oh, you should definitely watch Friends." Like maybe if someone was like, "I'm looking for a 90s sitcom specifically," you know? Yeah. Um I don't know, but maybe I'd also just recommend Wings at that point. <laughs> I think that's a nine I think that's fully in the 90s. It's been a while. I thought you'd recommend Green Acres. All right. Well, that's not a 90s one, though. I mean, yeah. No, I would recommend Green Acres all day. They got one of them from Monica's grandma. Who went out? I don't know exactly. Monica Lewinsky? No, Monica from uh, Friends, probably. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, like, how is it really impossible? Oh, they got the apartment. Yeah, you're right. That's right. I think you are right on that. I only knew Friends as the one show that's that showed after the showed after the afternoon weekday shows on Kids W. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a uh, after school show in the high school that we would watch a lot. Yeah. Because Mike would come over and he really liked that, so then it's, it would be on. I think it would come on, like, before The Simpsons, maybe? So we'd watch, like, Simpsons reruns also. No, Green Acres, though. <laughs> Highly recommend Green Acres. Can't go wrong. Can't ever go wrong. Can't go wrong with Green Acres. Come on, man. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. Yeah, I like the scarf. I like way you did that scarf. Yeah, because in the manga, uh, the Shadow Star, when he does like the cloth thing, mm-hmm. it actually like becomes dry brush. Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, the the manga does a really good job of uh, mm-hmm. incorporating a lot of cool elements. I like how he could basically just kind of fly on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just like, I'm just standing really, really high up. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. But yeah, I don't know. There's that's the majority. That's a lot of TV shows like that are like I said. That's also a lot of comedy. Yeah, like comedy is not ageless. Uh, it's very much the uh, physical comedy is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, stick around. Like like I said, silent movies and stuff. Falling down is always funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I said, I love the the clip where like Buster Keaton drives the car and it yeah. falls apart around him. Or the part where it's like the house falls. Yeah, like that's hilarious. Every time. Someone getting hit with a fish. Yeah. Always funny. Always funny. I have never seen someone get hit with a fish and it wasn't funny. I love that news reporter when he's like in the boat doing the news and the fish just comes up and smacks him in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Someone getting hit with a fish. Timeless. Just actually timeless. Except maybe in the future when people don't understand what fish or faces are. Sure. It might not be timeless then. Sure. <laughs> Whatever, man. But right now, it's currently timeless. <laughs> what? It is like, the, like fish and faces. Man. Look, if you're a nine billionth generation pure energy being who's made entirely of space dust, do you think you're going to understand what a face is? Fuck no. <laughs> like, dude, you don't even see. <laughs> How are you supposed to understand what a face is? It's not going to be funny. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, I'm just saying what everyone's thinking. Yeah. I'm a cutting edge comedian guy. I'm just a fucking visionary, man. Y'all, y'all don't even know about this shit. 
Y'all thinking existence is going to be like physical forever? <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> Life, yes, I get it. Right. Oh, um, I clip this up a little bit. Clip it? Like, fix it? It's a little... There you go, there you go. It was just a little, like... From the point where the pencil ended? Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you went to get to the end of the page, it was just a little... I was like, yeah, just straighten that line out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exactly. Yeah, see, Calvin gets me. He says, think on the 85th dimension. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> now there's two of you. <laughs> He's just an extension of me. We're only one. Oh. Calm down. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> okay. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> Oh, by the way, after I went into the room to go use the restroom, I scared the shit out of Ellen. Oh, really? What yeah. did you do? Did you just, just walked in and I, scared her? Yeah, I just walked in and it scared the shit out of her. I've heard she's very easy to scare. That's what Sabrina said. Yeah, she is really easy to scare. Yeah. yeah she's super easy. She said you could just straight scare the shit out of her at a moment's notice. Yeah. And you don't even have to try. Yeah, you don't. It's kind of funny. Yeah. It's not It's not like a, you need to set it up much. You apparently don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's, there's no setup needed. No. No. Just set it and forget it. What was I going to say? Isn't it yellow or whatever? No. Oh, it looked yellow. Oh, it is blue. Oh, for some reason the light made it blue. Yeah, background color. Mm. Just fuck it, leave it white? No. 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 Won't work, unfortunately. Damn. Can't really. Oh, that yellow actually is a pretty good one. Let's look at that. Okay. No, it's not a color that usually ends up looking nice. Yeah. So, but chat, how's actually the feel to be uh, on actual day 14 of Inktober? Yeah, right. It's way ahead. Yeah, because that's like, what, six ahead, right? Yeah, because you still have uh, the three 5 Ds ones and these three. Yep. And then on Saturday, we'll uh, be a little further ahead again. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I'll do four more. Got to outsmart the competition. Let's do them all in the meantime. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Although, technically, this is a mix. Maybe? Is it a mix? No. I mean, because I'm doing like three in one sitting. Yeah, but it's easier for you to do three in one sitting than it is to find time to do one of them every day. I guess, yeah. Makes sense. I'm just like trying to think in my head. is like, am I working smarter? No, because it would be harder for you to schedule an hour every day to do this. Right, right. And then it would be like, oh, I have to get my hour in. And oh, and now I'm behind. If you didn't get it. Mm, that's true. Which is way, like, harder. Because especially if you fall behind, it gets harder. Yeah. Because that, like, oh, I'm so behind feeling can just be brutal, you know? Mm-hmm. It's weird. This looks like it's, like, an orange on the screen. It kind of is. It's yellow ochre. Yeah, it's got, like, a weird orange color. At least on my top monitor. Yeah. The, bottom, the bottom monitor is a little more yellow. This is what happens when you use really janky TVs as your monitor. <laughs> and you don't set the colors right. That's why I don't do color correction on anything. Not just because I'm lazy. But because, but because the monitor isn't even right. It's a mix of both. I'm going to need a 20K monitor anyway if I really want to, you know, make the color correction look good. 
That'll be the first thing we buy with money from the booth. Uh, it's, a, it's a new monitor for me because, I, you know, it's for business. Fair. Uh, I was thinking of uh, getting another Cintiq thing at some point, too, because the Cintiq guy was pretty old. Yeah, that's true. That'll be good. We'll do that after an assortment of things that I need, you know, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. obviously. And the gyro statue. Obviously. Obviously. Cash is at CoronaCon right. in Dallas. Dude, I can't wait to go to CoronaCon. I'm so hyped. Oh, I got an email back from um, the people who are doing uh, C2E2 and ECC. Oh, what'd they say? They said that the reason that the website's like that is because they're currently running a metaverse thing for NYC. Yeah. See, and they're just not, they don't have any plans on uh, updating that for the foreseeable future. So. Okay. Yeah, I did see some ad about that metaverse thing or whatever, so I figured it was just something like that. Yeah, I was just like... Uh, That's a shame. On. I'd like to get back into because they didn't lo- let us roll over our ECC stuff. They didn't, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they gave us a refund at least, but it's still like, come on. Yeah, I would have rather had the guaranteed booth than the refund. Though. Yeah, same. Because now everyone's gonna their fucking dog is gonna be trying to get into ECC. Yeah, because because the money was already a sunk cost at that point. Yeah. And like. Yeah, and it's even weirder too, because like all the other cons that we didn't get into now we're on the wait list for. Now we have to like wait even longer to hear back. Yeah. On if we can get in or not. Mm-hmm. Oh well, Sailor V. All right. At least the art looks good. Yep. All right. Got your boy Blackstar. The MVP. Mm-hmm. Do put in so much work. Oh yeah. God. They grabbed laser beams. God battles are all about mid-air combat. God so battles. I gotta teach myself how to fly. Yeah. Well, then why are you watching me bathe, though? So I'm not distracted by tits. Yeah. <laughs> gotta understand. Dude, that's just part of god battles. Tits might be involved in a god battle. Look, I've seen some of them god statues. They got boobies. If they whip them out in the fight, that could distract you. It's like, true. I guarantee it. That's how they beat Kaguya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so frustrating that that's technically how they beat the the origin of all chakra. Yeah. God, that's so dumb. Why are you so dumb, Naruto? You don't want to get hit with thirst mid-fight. Never do. Don't do it. Stay strong. Well, actually, chat, you know, we have a, a little bit of celebration to do before we uh, sign off here. Uh, we just broke 950 followers on Instagram. Oh, that's good. We're getting close to 1,000. So we're less than uh, we're less than 50 followers away from that. So be sure to tell your friends, tell your dad, tell your mom to follow us on Instagram because once we hit 1,000, we're going to be doing a commission raffle. To, yeah, we should uh, probably post about that soon. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get there uh, whenever we get there. Inktober right now kind of takes priority. Well, I just mean we need to mention it so we can just get it out there. I understand. Um, but yeah. And we're how many followers away from our 100 followers in this one? Uh, we're still at 69 followers here. So, so we're pretty close to uh, that 100 follower when we go do the live reading of Sean, Evil X Roommate. I can't wait. Fan fiction. Of the, I'm really excited. Because you guys were excited about the, po- the Yu-Gi-Oh art we did, but you'll be even more excited. Oh, man. To see Sean and Parker. When Sean's blank glows. No, I think it'll be uh, it'll be much easier when cons start back up because mm-hmm. that's how we always met people. Like we got to go to cons and meet everyone. Yeah, again, we'll uh, probably be getting to see people come December um, next year too. I'm I'm interested to see what happens. I I I've been applying to cons left and right to see if we can get into anything next year, but we'll uh, cross the bridge <laughs> when we come to it. Yeah, but. In the meantime, we'll be hanging out here. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Yeah, uh, let's put all the other uh, ones back on real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll zoom out. So that was all of them for tonight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just add a little bit then. It's like funny how I like you got like complicated to more complicated to not even at all complicated. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, right? Hey man, simple is good. Blackstar is a simple man. He's a simple man. He's a very simple man. With a lot of sim- not very complicated weapons. Yeah, yeah. That's where he put all of his complexity into. Not into intellect or anything else. No. <laughs> He's like, look man. He's that D&D character where intelligence is the dump stat. Yeah, it's super dumb stat. I just need to make sure I'm hitting people properly. Yeah, yeah. I am a god. As long as I hit good, I win. <laughs>
<laughs> Just don't get hit. Thanks, Ash. Appreciate it for y'all for coming out. Uh, yeah, Ash says the Death of the Kid one is her favorite one. Nice, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else uh, to say other than thanks for coming out. We'll see you uh, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to head out. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.